Sometimes what critics say about your game doesn't match what players think about your game. Now, there's plenty of games where critics absolutely trash the game, but it still becomes a bestseller. Or, I think the more common one, games get like fives and sixes and sometimes sevens from critical outlets, but still go on and become popular games and win awards of their own. There's a lot of games like that, but I don't really want to talk about those. Instead, I want to talk about the games where critics love them, but nobody plays them. See, I personally think that sounds a lot like my old Jazz Fusion album I released. Two summers and a wayward afternoon. Ah! Actually, no, critics didn't like that one either. So, maybe not that one. You've got a game. It's pretty good. Why isn't it selling? There's plenty of reasons why, but maybe looking at some acclaimed flops and dissecting their failures might tell us how this happens. I want to start with my personal favorite out of the acclaimed flops of the world, the entire goddamn Boomblox series. You look at both of these games and explain to me why they only sold 250,000 copies, I have no idea. The original game is thought to have sold maybe only 60,000 in its first month, despite 8 to 9 out of 10 ratings. But over time, word of mouth for the physics-based puzzler action sandbox game led to a quarter million sales and a sequel the next year. Boomblox Bash Party was straight up a better game, improving on the physics, the interactions, having more unique puzzles, but an even smaller marketing budget. Now, the first game was marketed through mostly Coke Zero and online ads. The second had, like, a Nintendo Power preview page, and that is it. Next to Zero Marketing and being the sequel to an already acclaimed flop couldn't save the Boomblox series. If you're an indie dev, please spiritual successor this bad boy out of the ground. I want a third one. Ah, Mad World. That violent, gritty, M-rated Wii title. The console's reputation for casual games made selling this thing hard, especially once people started making a fuss. I'm sorry, Platinum Games. Y you made a thing. Nobody bought it. Actually, Platinum's always kind of had this problem. Okami came out right at the start of the 7th generation, which was a problem considering it was only on 6th gen consoles. Pair that with next to no advertising on launch, and it'd be a long while before the game found sales that matched its accolades. Consider how many people consider the game a Wii title instead of a PS2 title, a sign of how things were for the Wolf's Adventures. Bayonetta faced a similar fate. Well received, highly rated, but it didn't meet Platinum's expectations in terms of sales numbers and they were hesitant to make a sequel. Nintendo, of all people, produced and published the second game, on the Wii U only. And surprise, surprise, the Wii U was not a very successful console, so the game sold even worse. Bayonetta's became a cult classic, which made her appearance in Smash Bros. 4 all the more surprising. You know, it's an M-rated game about a sexy witch, and third and flippin' E10 Smash Bros. What happened? What's going on? Luckily, the first game has gotten releases on PC and all the other 8th gen consoles, and the sequel was also ported to the Switch, so that fate's kind of been reversed. As for the wonderful 101, yeah, that's still stuck on the Wii U, so... And it's gone. Good job, fellas, you made a game. And that was it. That's all you did. Hey, I've got a good joke. Uh, Klonoa? Wow, that wasn't even that funny. Technically, it's a pretty solid 2.5D platformer. Critically, it's well-reviewed. Financially, it's a failure because it looked too juvenile for any prospective fans. It got a sequel, which went the same way. And then they remade the first game on the Wii. They thought the Wii rendition would sell better because it was on a more casual console with a younger fan base. But on top of getting next to no actual marketing from Namco, the game also just felt dated, so people didn't really like it all that much. Surprise, it's because it was dated. It came out in like the 90s, and they just released it like 20 years later for some reason. Just a heads up, selling on an old console will do this to your game. Paper Mario and Conker's Bad Fur Day were two dialogue-heavy, technically impressive, critical successes that sold very poorly initially, because, let's be real, why purchase a new N64 game for 60 bucks when the GameCube comes out next year and its games will be so much better for the exact same price? It took re-releases on the Wii and the Xbox Classic to sell copies like Nintendo and Rare expected. They sold well enough to get sequels, though. Paper Mario got a new installment on the GameCube with a Thousand Year Door, and Conker got... Oh no, No More Heroes had a tough time selling. It's thought that maybe a quarter million copies were sold of the first game on the Wii despite critical acclaim and being a mature Wii game really didn't help matters. The sequel was released on the Wii as well, but also the PS3, to maybe see if the game had a following that just wasn't going to buy the game on such a kiddie console. It didn't. It had a cult fanbase for sure, but neither game was a runaway success. After testing the waters with Travis Strikes Back, a third proper entry in the series is actually happening this time, we swear, on the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully it sells better. I hear those games are a lot of fun. I've never played one. 
Oh, Rayman, it's like Ubisoft's trying to kill you. Rayman Origins launching right alongside Skyrim, Legends launching right alongside GTA V, and heck, that game was also originally a Wii U exclusive, and its exclusive features were ham-fistedly remade with like at the PS4 touch bar or something. Not a satisfying way to play the game, and the definitive release was on a console literally nobody wanted. Sometimes you have a good idea, but it comes out too late. DJ Hero was another rhythm game meant to mix up a Guitar Hero formula with a handful of EDM tracks. Note that this game came before the massive EDM revival from the likes of Skrillex, but it came with another bulky plastic bit to beef up its price. If you liked rhythm games, why would you pick this up when you could pick up one of the dozens of Guitar Hero standalone sequels and you could play with the controller you already had? You didn't need to buy a whole new controller for 50 more bucks. Sometimes you have a really good idea, but it gets ruined by your publisher. Here's a fun game for you. Mention Titanfall 2 in any Discord and let the chat spill over with people talking about Titanfall 2. The first game was well received and sold alright, but the sequel was set to be the massive multi-platform successor that would put Titanfall on the map. Critically lauded for its enhancements to the first person shooter, loads of devout fans, and it launched a week after Battlefield 1. I should mention both games were published by EA. Battlefield 1, of course, was the more successful title. It soaked up all the accolades and the fandom and the marketing and the sales, and it led to Respawn, entering a spiraling state of downfall ruin which EA used to purchase the company for themselves and make Battle Royale. Good job, fellas! Sometimes you have a good idea, but you market it like a prick. Blur's entire marketing campaign was about how much edgier and darker it was versus Mario Kart. There's a reason why Blur's sequel was called Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. Sometimes you just oversaturate your own market. Look at how many games Telltale made. Look at the critical responses. And then look at how well they sold- oh no, don't maybe don't look at that, that's sad. And sometimes being the brawl in the family artist just can't save your game. Tadpole Trouble was a rhythm adventure title from a small indie team with a 90 on Metacritic. Being a made for Wii U indie darling with only a single ad that was never really shown anywhere but their own YouTube channel didn't do much. It did not do much. By far, probably the most infamous of acclaimed flops is Spec Ops The Line. This is an unassuming desert modern time warfare game that held a bit of a dark secret. Spec Ops The Line was actually a deconstruction of the violence and implied war crimes of the modern AAA shooter, the modern warfare and the battlefield bad companies on the market at the time, later revealing itself to be more and more about choices in games, the idea of a one-man army, the escapism these games offer during the height on the war in the Middle East, and all this works because the game is sold up front as just another gritty AAA shooter. This extended into the marketing, which didn't tell people what made Spec Ops The Line so special. They kind of kept that tucked away as a secret. And that ended up killing the game's sales. And then it ended up selling so poorly that it came with pre-orders at Duke Nukem Forever to try to pad out its Steam install numbers. Which worked! About as well as selling Duke Nukem Forever could have worked. Of course, that's not all the acclaimed flops we've ever had as a games industry, but that's quite a few big ones. But what makes an acclaimed flop? What makes a good game sell bad? A lot of it we've seen can depend on the platform and the marketing. If a game launches on a console with very few users, whether that's because it's not a strong contender this generation or because it's heading out the door, it's hard to get people invested. Your marketing needs to be transparent about what your game is all about, and it needs to put pressure on players to pick up the title at or around launch because that's when it really truly matters. And if you're launching a game that doesn't really mesh with the ethos surrounding its platform, it can be hard to get people invested. Also, sometimes EA happens. Games are an absolute pain to make, and the end result, seeing it get finished, is an absolute triumph. And while it's nice to know people are enjoying the game, sometimes the sales just don't reflect that, and businesses care more about sales and enjoyment, unfortunately. Having a successful game sell poorly hurts so many people, and often the only thing we can do about it now is just reflect or hope for remakes, as original copies can go for a ton of money. Well, unless you're fortunate enough to get packed with cheesehead string cheese sticks like a good friend beyond good and evil over there. Yes, that was a thing that happened. They literally did that. What's going on? What is happening? If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.